Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we're looking at another exploration rover and this one is called the NGC Nandi MUV which is this lovely thing right here. So this is a fairly small rover with a opening and closing door as well as a script that makes it have specialized suspension. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, there it is. This thing is 810 small blocks using the Sparks of the Future DLC pack and the Decorative Block Number 2 DLC pack and no mods. So coming out of there what we're going to do is have a quick look around the outside and then we're going to drive it around for a bit and see how it handles. So coming all the way over to here at the very front this is what we get. So we've got a lovely glass cockpit to drive this thing around and we can see plenty of transparent LCD screen blocks showing us lots of different information via scripts. We've got two interior lights on our left and our right to light up the darkness and just below that we can see how our suspension is coming down and onto our wheels. For our wheel blocks we've got two little spotlights to help light up the darkness as well as two more interior lights. They come across onto some blast door blocks onto a few more wheel blocks just to help in case you slam into something like a rock or a tree. As we move around the side we're going to see some more of the suspension underneath and how scary it actually looks but we'll also see where our door will open and close and this is only possible due to the recent changes to block collision allowing it to open smoothly without angering Lord Clang. Yes on the side here we've got a button which will then fold down a ramp and then will open up a door. You cannot open them both up at the same time, they're on a timer block to make sure you cannot escape once you're inside. Yes, as we move along there we've got some good use of the letter blocks spelling out the company's name that designed the vehicle. And coming just below there we can see how the suspension is actually working. So it comes across onto some rotors which move across onto our wheels that go across onto some around the blocks that will lead towards the front where our spotlight was. And yes, it's all being held on via rotors, which is a very dangerous thing to be doing in Space Engineers, but it works and that's all that's important. Yes, coming around to the back of this rover, we've got a connector to unload or load up goods. I guess we need to do that and a camera to help reverse this up and connect up that connector. Two more interior lights with a reddish glow because there are brake lights and at the very back, instead of our wheels on our suspension, we've got some blast or edges just to help with some unnecessary bumps when trying to dock up. Moving up and above this vehicle we come over to here we've got ourselves a Gatling turret to help us with any pesky drones that come close. Then moving all the way up to here we've got some nice block work to go all the way along the top and stopping it from looking very flat along with two more interior lights just to light it up in the darkness. Moving down and underneath we'll see our scary suspension and how it's been all connected up. Can't really see it too well but because of the grass you can see how the glass or blocks and wheels are there at the front. Then moving all the way along the bottom to the back, we then got some more blast or blocks right there. And with that all done and out of the way, it's time to go inside this thing. So grabbing my character and coming all the way around over to here, we can press this button and then we get an alarm sound. It folds all the way down and once it has reached its maximum limit, the door will open up and allow us to go inside. There we go. So now we can hop up to here and walk inside where we'll press this button, the door will close up and then the ramp will follow it shortly, sealing us in. And once that ramp has fully closed up there is no escaping this vehicle. So if you're in an emergency, try to bring a warhead or something. Yes, opening up this doorway here, we can't do it anymore even if we are to say toggle the block on and then open it up. There is no more escaping from this thing. Yes, turning around here, this is what we get on the interior. There is our control seat to drive it, a passenger seat, we've got a hydrogen engine, a survival kit to respawn and recharge on, an air vent to make sure we can go around different planets that don't have oxygen and a lot more buttons. So we've got a button there to open up the door which will do what we just saw, we've got a gyroscope to make sure we can control this thing when going over a jump and a button over here that will turn on our hydrogen engine and give us a glorious sound. Looking all the way up we've got ourselves our sound block which is where that noise was coming from and walking all the way over to here, that's our survival kit and our timer blocks for absolutely everything. On our left right here is a medium cargo container which has got some ammunition for our turret up above us 
and then moving all the way over to here. We've got an ore detector and antenna just neatly sitting there. And we've got over here some wheel blocks just for some decoration. If I turn around and look down because I did miss this out, we do have some window blocks with some red lights underneath there, which is a very nice little thing to do and makes it so you don't get any awkward bumps when walking over lights. And it does look very good how it's been set up. But yes, coming into our cockpit and sitting down like so, this is what we get. We've got LCD screens above us telling us our hydrogen, oxygen and power and of course our turret. We then got our passenger seat, whether it's occupied or not, our gravity and speed and altitude. And then on the very right hand side, we then got our hydrogen engine, our ore detector, reactor one and two on and off and if any blocks are damaged. Bringing up the HUD, this is what we get. One, two and three are empty and number four will be to turn our reactors on and off. Number five is for our camera, which is just above our cockpit where we can view straight forwards and get a good view at what's coming up ahead of us. Six and seven is for our antenna and ore detector and number eight is for our spotlights at the front. So turning all the way around to here and pressing number eight, there we go. Number nine is for some light, which is going to be for down here, just to make sure we can actually see where we're going if we're using a very dark mod. Number two, three and four is empty, so it's time to drive this thing around. So coming over to here and finding our rotors first of all, I'll just show you how those wheels have been set up. So our front wheels have a lot of leeway with where they can rotate, and our back wheels have a lot limited. This is just stopping us from flipping over and going very wonky when trying to drive this thing around. So our front wheels will adapt to the terrain and our back wheels will try to, but they are generally there to keep us stable and upright. So I'm doing the parking brake and going forwards. I'll hopefully be able to get to a point where I can show you how this is going to work. We should be able to see it wobbling down there as we try to move around and as it tries to adapt to the terrain. Yeah, just going over to here, we've got a maximum speed of about 15 meters per second. Of course, we're going to speed up when going downhill. And then just turning around, there you go. You can see that quite clearly there of how it's rotating and trying to keep us stable when going down a hill. So that's how that's all been set up. And it's very nice. It reminds me very much of the Savannah vehicle that I did beforehand, but that was using a script to control it. So yeah, just going along here. We're going to get a nice stable adventure all the way down the side of this small hill. But as for that, that is pretty much it for the Nandi MUV. It's a very nice little vehicle and I appear to have tipped it by holding it, but we'll just come all the way over to here because we are on a gyroscope and hopefully we can do something with this. But that is it for the Nandi MUV. It's a very nice little rover to play around with if you're interested in using one with such a suspension system. And it might even be worth downloading just to take a look at how it's been set up in case you want to use it yourself because it is a very novel thing to play around with. You will need of course to have a script to make sure that the subgrids can be powered. So if I come over to here and find the and find our programmable blocks over to here, this one will be our whip subgrid wheel control script, which is how we're going to control our wheels and power our wheels from a subgrid. So yes, that is it for this video. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to play around with it yourself. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.